Okay, here we go. Hyperbolas. So we're going to look at the geometry of hyperbolas, little translations of it. Eccentricity, I suppose we better look at it since that might be a question that I wouldn't be ready for. Okay, a hyperbola is a set of all points in a plane whose distance from two fixed points, called the foci, have a constant difference. The fixed points are the foci. The line through the foci is a focal axis. That's the major axis. goes through the foci. The point that is midway between the two foci is the center. The points where the hyperbola intersects its focal axis are the vertices which I kind of went through on the board a few seconds ago. So that's what it's going to look like, okay? So you got a center, two vertices where they go through, and they wrap around the focus, just like a parabola wraps around the focus. A hyperbola, multiple parabolas, multi, uh, wrap around multiple foci, okay? The distance, the shape it makes, these two distances, um is the square of c squared equals a squared plus b squared, basically. Okay. So, instead of in an ellipse has a plus sign here, it'll have a minus sign. Left, right hyperbola. Up, down hyperbola. Left, right, up, down. Okay, so c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and you will have asymptotes. It'll be at negative plus or minus b over a and plus or minus a over b. Okay, and I'll show you how all those work. Okay, here's our asymptotes, which the hyperbolas will get closer and closer to as they keep going. They'll get closer and closer, okay? So where, where do you draw these lines? Well, if it's a left, right, it's going to be B over A. If it's up, down, it's going to be A over B, okay? That's if the center is at 0, 0. Centers at 0, 0 make things a lot easier. All right, so let's look at this. Just like an ellipse, we have to divide both sides to get one on the right-hand side. So it's x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. Okay? So, x squared, you don't worry about what number's higher or not. You worry about what is positive, what is negative. Since x squared is positive, it's going to be a right-left hyperbola. Okay? So... The center is at 0, 0. You go 1, 2, here's a vertex. 1, 2, here's a vertex because it's the square root of A. So then your asymptote is going to be at negative or positive and negative B over A, which is B is 3, A is 2, so 3 over 2. So 0, 0, 3, 2, negative 3, negative 2, here and here. So you're going to have asymptotes here and here. And it's going to kind of come like this, like that, like that, like that. So your vertices are at 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. Your foci, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. 
c squared equals 4 plus 9. c squared equals 13, so take the square root. So your foci are at square root of 13, 0, and negative square root of 13, 0. Okay? Hey, look at that. Mr. Bierschbach was right for once. Okay? All right. So if the foci are at 0, 4 and negative 0, 4, where's our center going to be? 0, 0, because it's going to be halfway in between those two. 0, 0. The conjugate axis has a length of 2. So what sometimes I do is I draw a box. So the foci are at 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a focus. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a focus. Where the conjugate axis, or the non-major axis, has a length of 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. I'll just put a little dot there for now. All right. So, if it has, oh, the conjugate axis has a length of 2, so it should be 1 and 1, right? Right there and right there, okay? That's the conjugate axis. Uh, I knew I'd do that. Okay. So, if that's 1 and 1 and the focus is that, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C is 4. So 4 squared equals a squared plus, this is 1 away, so 1 squared. So this is 16 equals a squared plus 1. 15 equals a squared, so a equals the square root of 15, which is really close to there and really close to there. So if we draw a little box... This is where our asymptotes go through. And so then we go like this. Oops. Let me try that again. Like this. So a really skinny hyperbola here. Looks like that. Okay, so what's the equation? Well, if it's an up-down, y squared is positive. And we go the square root of 15 squared is a minus x squared over 1 squared is 1 equals 1. Let's see if I'm right. Hey, look at that. I'm right again. Imagine that. It gets a little complicated here because instead of being at zero, zero, you have to add and subtract all these points on. So it gets a little complicated if we're not at zero, zero. Okay. Um, I think all of ours today are at zero, zero, so I'm going to quit for today.